It's a new day of learning, and I know that you're all excited to learn new things today. Welcome to our bread and pastry production class. I am Teacher Mervin, and today we will discuss another exciting lesson that will help you in becoming great pastry chefs someday. So join me in measuring dry and liquid ingredients accurately. Hello, Badet. Seems you are sad. What happened? I baked teacher and I failed. This is not the final product that I'm expecting. I don't know what happened. Okay, can I see it? Here it is, teacher. What did I do wrong? Your bread seems so dry. And I can sense that you have over-measured the ingredients, particularly the flour. I didn't follow the measurement. I just added the ingredients without measuring them. I see. You have to follow the ingredients accurately? Of course. In baking, it is really important to measure accurately in order to produce good quality baked final product. That is why it is really needed to follow the required measurement for each ingredient, be it dry or liquid. What did I do now? Can I have one more try? Sure, but this time, I'll help you out. Wow! Thank you, teacher! Okay, so before we, we do that, we have to wear something. Yes, we need to wear our PPEs or our personal protective equipment. Very good. Are you ready? Yes! Okay. Measuring accurately is important so as to have good quality baked products. In order to have accurate measurements of our ingredients, we will need these measuring tools. First, the liquid measuring cup. It is a kitchen tool used primarily to measure the volume of liquid ingredients like water, milk, and oil. Next is the measuring spoon. It is a set of spoons used to measure small quantities of ingredients like salt, baking powder, and baking soda. Third is the measuring cup. It is used to measure dry ingredients like flour, sugar, and powdered milk. And last is the weighing scale. It is used to measure large quantities of ingredients. Also, we will be needing the tray, spatula, and the sifter. How about the ingredients, Badet? I have all the needed ingredients, teacher. The first ingredient is flour. Flour is a powder made by grinding raw grains, roots, beans, nuts, or seeds. Flours are used to make many different foods. Cereal flour, particularly wheat flour, is the main ingredient of bread, which is a staple food for some cultures. And this is how we measure the flour. First, you have to sift the flour. Putting your flour through a sifter will break up any lumps in the flour, which means you can get a more accurate measurement. Step 2. Scoop to fill the measuring cup to overflow. Do not shake and lust. Level off with spatula. Easy, right? Now let's measure the sugar. Let's start with the white sugar. White sugar is the crystallized sucrose extracted from either sugar cane or sugar beets. It is one of the most popular sweeteners from baked goods to beverages. Sugar not only provides sweetness in baked goods and beverages, but it assists in important chemical reactions that occur during cooking and baking. Sifting is not necessary unless the white sugar is lumpy. To measure, fill the measuring cup until overflowing without shaking the cup. And finally, 
level of using a spatula. And next, the brown sugar. Brown sugar is a sucrose sugar product with a distinctive brown color due to the presence of molasses. It is coarser and more moist than white sugar and imparts a unique flavor and dark color to food systems. To measure, first, check if the sugar is lumpy before measuring. Also, remove the dirt. Next, scoop into the measuring cup and pack compactly until it follows the shape when inverted. Now, let's proceed to the powdered food like baking soda and baking powder. Baking soda is one of the most widely used leaveners in baked goods. This simple chemical compound, also known as sodium bicarbonate, is found in crystalline form in nature but is ground to a fine powder for use in cooking. On the other hand, baking powder is a dry chemical leavening agent, a mixture of a carbonate or bicarbonate in a weak acid. It is used to increase volume and lighten the texture of baked goods. First, remove the lumps in the powder by stirring. Next, scoop the powder into the measuring spoon. And last, level off with spatula. Our next ingredient is the shortening or the solid fats. Shortening is any fat that is a solid at room temperature and is used to make crumbly pastry and other food products. It can be made from either animal fat or vegetable oil. To measure, first fill the measuring cup or spoon with the shortening while pressing until it is full. Next, level the fat with spatula or a knife. Coming up next is the liquid fats. In general, liquid fats come from plant oils and are unsaturated fats. Some examples of these are olive, canola, corn, soybean, safflower, and sesame oils. To measure, first pour the oil in the glass measuring cup. Next, check if it's filled up to the measuring mark. To measure correctly, be sure to do it at eye level. This will ensure that you have an accurate measurement. Do not lift the cup when measuring. Next is the milk in liquid form. Liquid milk includes products such as pasteurized milk, skimmed milk, standardized milk, reconstituted milk, and fortified milk. They are used for different purposes in the dairy industry. To measure, pour the milk in the measuring glass. You also need to measure at eye level to ensure an accurate measurement. The last ingredient is the powdered milk. Powdered milk, also called as dried milk or milk powder, is a manufactured dairy product made by evaporating milk to dryness. Dry milk powder can be used in place of the milk called for in a recipe. To measure, first, remove lumps in milk by stirring. Second, scoop lightly to fill the measuring cup or spoon without shaking until it overflows. And lastly, use a spatula to level off the measurement. Now, Badet, how was the experience in measuring the liquid and the dry ingredients? It is easy to measure the dry and liquid ingredients. You just have to follow the required measurement in the recipe by, of course, measuring them accurately. So now, I am ready to bake. Great! I am truly happy that you have learned how to measure the liquid and the dry ingredients. Now go ahead and do the baking. Thank you, Teacher Marben. See you in a while. Okay then, good luck! In doing the laboratory activities, we should always remember the word Clego or clean as you go. Let us always put our trash like plastic packages or empty bottles of the ingredients to the proper trash bin in order to have a clean surrounding while doing your laboratory. It is also important that we segregate our garbages so we could help heal and preserve our Mother Earth. Let us do our share. 
Remember, the micro efforts that we do today will have a macro effect someday. I'm back with your Marvin. I have now the bread. Wow, it looks delicious. Yes, and actually it's perfect. Accurate measurement really helps. Thank you, teacher. Okay, now take a seat. It's important to have accurate measurement when you bake. Your ingredients measurement have to be precise in order to score that perfect and consistent result every time. Thank you for joining us today. I am Teacher Mervin once again. See you again next time for another learning experience. Always remember, baking is exciting. Bye!